Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight. We talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, I've talked a lot in my previous videos about Russia being a major exporter of oil and gas, also about commodities like coal, copper, iron ore and gold. I've also covered the agricultural sector in depth, so today my video is about forestry and trees. And according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, 49.4% of Russia, or approximately 809 million hectares of Russia, is forested. Of this, 31% or 256 million hectares is primary forest, which is the most diverse and carbon dense form of forest. And Russia is also one of the largest exporters of timber and wood products. Obviously, that's not a surprise given the amount of forest it has. I mean, by the way, Russia makes a whopping 8.5 billion per year from its exports of wood and associated wood products. Now, it appears that Russia's neighbour and recently joined NATO member is now suffering from the sanctions curse. I mean, despite the passage of two years, Finland has yet to find uh, a solution to the European embargo on timber purchases from Russia. It hasn't been able to find a substitute for Russian timber, and that's resulted in the closure of numerous factories and plants with a significant surge in prices. Russia, on the other hand, has not only identified new markets, but it's increased its export uh, capacity. Now, plus it's been able to gain market share in for foreign markets by offering very competitive prices. I mean, the Finns' rejection to import timber from Russia is causing it significant challenges, according to Tino Alto, who's the head of the Finnish Sawmill Industry Association. According to him, the ratio between logs and sawn timber prices has reached its highest level in more than 15 years, which, as he says, presents a significant challenge to the economic stability of the industry. I mean, in 2021, the industry produced around 12 million cubic metres of lumber per year. However, that figure has since decreased to 10.5 million. According to Jacob Donner Amel, who's a researcher at the University of East Finland, he says that timber prices are going to remain high in the country for an extended period and are going to have serious economic repercussions. Now, the majority of Finland's imports from Russia were unprocessed and sawn timber, uh, as well as, as wood fuel or firewood, as we would call it. And Finland was reliant on these supplies from Russia. I mean, it accounted for two thirds of the total volume in each of those two commodities. Now, Finland was able to identify uh, suppliers for fuel, for uh, wood fuel, for logs, etc., for heating from the Baltic countries plus Sweden and Denmark, there's been challenges in uh, sourcing timber. There's just not the number of places you can get it. And the import of unprocessed timber from uh, by a third from 2021 to 2023. Well, sawn timber fell by uh, about 40% over the same period. Now, the reason might not only be the higher prices, but the lack of supply on the world market, states Anastasia. Prickladova, who's a professor of international business at the Russian University of Economics. Now, it's, it's been two years since the EU introduced its ban on the imports of Russian timber, and yet Finland's still having a problem. I mean, it was reported recently that Finns were forced to burn for heating, not usual sawdust and other byproducts of the forestry industry but pulp wood and construction timber, which are actually in short supply due to the EU ban. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com so that I can prove it and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation and that is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. You'll see it there. And now everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And on that note, I would like to thank Colin Jelly, Tony Fernandez, Pat Kadar, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Pat, and Vasca1999, who donated after yesterday's video on uh, agriculture. Now, the fifth package of sanctions, which was introduced by the EU in the summer of 2022, was a full embargo on timber and timber products. I mean, prior to this, Russia was the second largest supplier to, of timber to the EU after China. 
I mean, its imports in 2021, and the EU's imports were at 4.6 billion. That's a lot of wood. By the way, it's also important that I mention that the USA, despite its rhetoric about not financing Russia and its war in the Ukraine, still buys over $1.5 billion worth of Russian timber products. And if you add that to enriched uranium and fertilizer that the US imports, that's $5 billion worth of Russian commodities. Now that's US hypocrisy for you. Now other European countries have experienced some impact because of the sanctions, but to a lesser extent given the reduced dependence on Russian timber. I mean, Sweden has its own logging industry, so it was able to replace Russian timber with its own raw materials. But poor Finland's been unable to replace Russian timber. That's according to Artem Dave, who's head of analytics at the Hulk Markets. I mean, in theory, Finland could source timber from China. I mean, which has increased its purchases of wood products from Russia. But there's two main obstacles to that. Firstly, getting the timber uh, from China to uh, Finland is halfway around the world, because of the way around the world, which makes the uh, logistics expensive, which again pushes the prices up. Plus, why would Ch uh, China want to uh, sell its timber when it can produce and sell finished goods? I mean, Mr. Dave also adds that China's supplies don't actually meet the needs in terms of quality and volume uh, that the Russian uh, products did. So despite uh, the shortage and rise in prices, Finland is not asking that the EU will lift the embargo. Instead, it's advocating for a total global ban on Russian timber imports by countries around the world, by all the G7 countries and their vassals. Now, Japan and US have not ceased importing Russian timber, although Japan's volumes have been slightly reduced. Now, the majority of the 10.5 cubic metres of uh, wood products uh, produced by uh, Finland is exported. In fact, it's about 8.5 billion cubic metres, leaving only 2 million cubic metres in the country. Now, Russia's timber industry is well, have identified the new market opportunities. I mean, they've left the export destinations from, of Europe to North Africa, Japan, Southeast Asia. Now, the issue is that these countries used to have be significant markets for Finnish countries. Consequently, they've had to close their sawmills because they don't have the product. I mean, the Merkinbarrel mill with an annual production capacity of 220,000 cubic metres of sawn timber went out of business. Currently, there are layoffs at the Jusino pulp mill, which is only nine miles from the Russian border near Naparanta. Now, that facility produces high-yield softwood pulp, which is used as a raw material for the production of cardboard, tissue and printing paper. I just think glue rolls are involved in that too. Now, the dry uh, cargo port in the Finnish city of uh, Kuvola, which cost an estimated 40 million euros to construct, has remained idle because the products that used to come from Russia and then re-exported was um, stopped. I mean, the facility was only open for a few. Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty bad for them. I mean, Finland's had to shut uh, operations at a large number of its sawmills, but Russian companies were able to overcome the embargo. I mean, Russia found new markets for its timber and Finland doesn't have the timber to sell. I mean, after the first uh, introduction of the embargo, there was obviously a, a lot of logistical challenges, given that Russia sold half of its timber to Europe. But, I mean, and in 2022, yeah, exports uh, of timber fell by about 20%. But Russian companies uh, also lost a bit of money. They didn't make as much profit because they were too busy trying to find uh, the new markets. I mean, the, the Sergeyzda Group, which is a major forestry industry company, uh, its revenue declined by 40% in the first quarter of 2023, and its profitability dropped. However, that has since bounced back because they found the alternative markets. They also found the new logistics chain and in the second half of the year, exports from Russia uh, were restored, albeit in a different direction, eastwards, south, southwards, etc. So, plus the redirected export volumes not only compensated for the lost exports, 
uh, but also increased overall deliveries. So there's every cloud has a silver lining. I mean, in 2023, Russia increased its exports of timber and timber products by a third. And that's compared to the pre-sanctions level of 2021 and reached in 2023 8.4 billion. So now China remains the primary purchaser of Russian sawn timber, with Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan vying for second or third place. The most significant increase in exports last year was to Turkey, which saw a 2.3 fold increase as well as to Kazakhstan. Now on Turkey, I'm absolutely convinced that that's just for reselling into the Europe. And I think you're probably right. I mean, uh, Hong Kong and the UA are also buyers, but again, that's probably going to uh, Europe. As I mentioned, the hypocritical USA remains a large buyer and there's no sign of an embargo at the moment, although they have imposed tariffs that had no effect on their imports of Russian to so Russian export deliveries are demonstrating consistent growth and um, they keep on growing according to figures from January to 2024. I mean, new sales markets in Lebanon, Iran and Iraq have increased this year. Obviously, construction is going on there and deliveries to Syria, Israel and even Afghanistan. Nevertheless, over 65% of the total timber volumes of, of Russian timber go to China. So I'm glad to help you see the wood for the trees. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Do comment, do uh, interact with me if you've enjoyed this video. And obviously, if you can help me fund the channel, click on the donate button. Thank you. See you all soon.